If at any time I speak of light and rays as coloured or endued with colours, I would be understood to speak not philosophically and properly, but grossly and according to such conceptions as vulgar people in seeing all these experiments would be apt to frame. For the rays to speak properly are not coloured. In them there is nothing else but a certain power and disposition to stir up a sensation of this or that colour. For a sound in a bell or musical string, or other sounding body, is nothing but a trembling motion, and in the air nothing but that motion propagated from the object, and in the sensorium it is a sense of that motion under the form of sound. So colours in the object are nothing but a disposition to effect this or that sort of rays more copiously than the rest. In the rays they are nothing but their dispositions to propagate this or that motion into the sensorium, and in the sensorium they are sensations of, the, of those motions under the forms of colour. Now, in this very short paragraph we have the phrase, nothing but, used four times. And reading them, I remember the first time I read that passage, I thought, Christ, they're, they're almost like the four horses of, of a scientific apocalypse. Like, we have now entered the nothing but universe. The universe is nothing but. I mean, a scientist now might say it is nothing but universe. Just as the children of Israel came up out of, were led by Moses, up out of the land of Goshen, up out of the land of Egypt, and they came into the terrible desert of Zin. And in the desert of Zin, they talked about it is no place of seed or of figs or of vines or of pomegranates, neither is it neither is there any water for us or our cattle to drink. And they talk about in it our souls are dried away. Now I think modern scientists have led us into a nothing but universe that is without colour, that is without taste, without touch, without all of these things. And I'm not denying that Newton isn't isn't is isn't right here. I mean what Newton is saying is so far so good. But like in, in lesser, in the hands of lesser persons, uh, and by the time we reach the 18th century, we are straight into the nothing but universe. Now, add that to Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 28, and we have the formula for the modern world. Now, can I just tell you a story in relation to what, what I think has happened as a consequence of the molecule um, of, of, of interpretative endeavour which was born out of the union of Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 28 and this Newtonian uh, or scientific view of the nothing but universe. It's a story out of Africa. I mean, the story goes that I think it was in, at the end of the 18th century or maybe the beginning of the 19th century, there was a plunderer explorer somewhere in Africa and he had amassed a huge fortune in merchandisable goods, wonderful African ivories and splendid carvings. Now, he was somewhere in the heart of Africa and he had to get them to the coast of the Indian Ocean to rendezvous with a ship that would be passing that way of the third next moon and um, so he hired the best African porters he could get not just strong men but he had to hire men who were happy because this was going to be a long journey and one morning having eaten they were ready to assume their burdens and off they went singing their songs and these were it was a joy to be with them because they were happy and the spirits of their ancestors were coming with them and their gods were coming with them and the next morning again they assumed their burdens and off they went and the third morning and the fourth morning and the fifth morning these people were happy people and they travelled finally out of their own tribal lands in through other kinds of lands that were geologically different and the vegetation was different and the animals were different but they were still singing and their gods were coming with them because the gods were in the songs and uh, after two and a half moons, it looked as if they had made tremendous progress. They had indeed made tremendous progress, and they were going to be at the coast of, uh, of the Indian Ocean to rendezvous with the ship. But then one morning, having eaten, they didn't, they didn't happily assume their burdens. Instead, they seemed to sink into some tremendous trance state within themselves. And this old plunder explorer began to be very upset and to get belligerent, and uh, finally he took out a revolver and fired shots over them, but he was making no impression whatever on them because these people had sunk into some kind of trance state. Anyway, after a while he wised up and he sat down beside one of them and he said, what's going on? During the last two and a half months we've made tremendous progress. Now what's happening? And it took a long, long time for this man, this black man to come out, this African to come out of his, out of his trance state, to come into a sense of his own hands and his own feet and a sense of his own identity as a person. But finally he did emerge into the sense of who he was and he turned to him and he says, I will tell you. We have moved so far, so fast during the last two and a half moons that we must now sit down and wait till our souls catch up.